I thought I'd start with vitamin B12 first because autism or de development delay due to vitamin B12 has been known for 40 years. And we know from the previous talks that what we that the, what the children seem to have is a functional deficiency in vitamin B12. So if we look at that first, we can say, well, this we know. We've, we've known it for 40 years. We're just applying some old knowledge to the current problem. So we went through the process of myelination and one of the molecules in myelination is melatonin. And so vitamin B12 is involved in the production of melatonin. So if you meet B12 deficiency, you get a reduced production of melatonin. And so therefore you get lack of myelination of these neuronal stem cells in the brain. And you also have some associated problems that a lot of people with children with development delay will notice and that is they, have, they can have some gut issues. And so one of the other things that melatonin does is it helps them in the maturation of the gut epithelial cells. And if you don't do this, you have sensitivity to histamine and lactose. And you also have some other curious things that are found. And you have poor uptake of iron and a lot of divalent um, metal ions in the gut. So that's one thing. So that's, the two of the critical things that you find is this gut issues that are really big in these kids. And you have these multiple food sensitivities and all these things that come up. And really it's, it's because the gut hasn't matured. It hasn't matured to the extent that it can handle these things. It's not making the enzymes that it should to do it. And it's not making the processing steps in the gut. So it's a little bit like if you had severe diarrhea for months and months and months, you're, you'd have poor nutrient uptake and you'd have poor uptake of some molecules. And that's basically from the melatonin and the lack of melatonin, but it's slightly more complicated. So the other thing that we did was we talked about the energy production. So um, it's going on. And one of the things that B12 does is it's evolved in methylation and methylation is required to make CoQ10. So in that little electron transport chain that we had, there was a little shuttle vector that was taking energy from one side and moving to the next side. And that little shuttle was called CoQ10. So when we do the organic acids test, we can see that the CoQ10 precursor is made in abundance, but the CoQ10 is not being made. So the next thing that is made is creatine. All right, so we're going to go through the production of creatine. So over 40% of all methylation goes to making creatine. So you can see that if this is reduced, then the amount of energy transferred in the brain is going to be a lot slower. And so the development of the delay can occur just to this one step. As we mentioned, we knocked out this one in there. So here's your um, CoQ10 structure. Here's the three methylation groups that are, that are on there. These are methyl groups, ME is methyl, and that's methyl three. And it's a part of the um, electron transport chain. And we can see here that one of the precursors, as B2 deficiency goes up, the amount of this precursor goes up. So it's not being, it's not being converted to CoQ10. And so this is some data from all of the kids that I had, um, basically saying you're getting a lot of electron transport chain activity due to a lot of QTN. Um, and here's the... the the slide now that we have for creatine, and this is the synthetic pathway. This was the creatine. And one of the things that you notice an early sign with the kids is hypotonia, that they don't seem to have energy, that the muscles are limp and relaxed and they're not stiff and taut and, and toned. And this, we believe, is due to this creatine deficiency. They're not, the muscles are not getting enough energy to actually do anything. Tanya might have mentioned that her son had hypertonia for quite a long time. Yes. And it's another interesting problem is that you see it early on in development. It's one of the diagnostic things is hypertonia. And so it should be suspected if you see it. So the other interesting thing about creatine is that we say it's used for energy and and the brain, of course, uses lots of energy. And the thing that distinguishes us from other primates is that we have these large frontal lobe and temporal lobes in the brain. And these involve us to do a whole lot of things. They have motor functions, problem solving, memory, language, 
judgment, impulse control, spontaneity, and, and social and social behaviour. We won't worry about sexual behaviour in the children, hopefully not yet. But you can see that if you lack energy here, you're going to upset these problems. And the temporal lobes, which were early on, are involved in the foremost of long memory. So if a child is going to learn to speak, it has to remember the words that it has. It has to be able to put them together. And the other thing is recognising faces. So the kids initially have problems with facial recognition, interpreting body language, and that's another thing. They don't know whether you're cross or you're happy or whatever. And production of speech, one of the biggest things that I get contact is, my child doesn't talk. I want my child to talk. From a, a grandparent, having their child say something and be able to make a comment is so satisfying. And to me, it must be so heartbreaking not to have your child to speak. But so this is part of why we believe it. Remembering the names of objects. How can you say what you've done? How can you say that's the cat or something like that? If you can't remember what it is and recognition of language, this is a whole new puzzle. But the, the temporal lobe is involved in this. And what we're saying is these require a lot of energy, they require a lot of creatine, and these are the areas in the brain that have the highest creatine. So these are the sort of functions that are involved with these two different areas. And you can see that if creatine is low, you're going to have problems. So you're going to have problems in these. And that's what you see in the children. So here we have Broca's area, frontal lobe, temporal area. And so methyl B12 deficiency has all these problems. Now, one of the reasons we know it has these problems is because when we have people with chronic fatigue who also have B12 deficiency, they have these problems as well. And it, it, when it gets worse, when you have people now who have uh, dementia or Alzheimer's disease, these are the problems that they have. And low functional B12 is associated with this. So we have the end game, if you want to, which is dementia or um, Alzheimer's disease. And from that, we can learn what the children are likely to have. And I think that's very important. Biochemically, when you look at them, they're very, very similar. So yes, and it's an assumption, but I think it's quite a valid, what we would say, a learned assumption. So that's sort of dealt with the B12 aspect of it.